Toluene diisocyanate, commonly called TDI and its derivatives, will react with water, including moisture in the air, polyol, or any alkaline compound such as ammonia or detergents. Because of this reactivity, these materials may present potential physical and health hazards during handling. In this hazard communications section, we will discuss the physical characteristics of TDI, the routes of entry, the potential health effects of overexposure, first aid, and the personal protective equipment required when handling TDI. Physical and chemical testing provide both manufacturers and customers with information necessary to protect employees, as well as information pertaining to the physical properties of the material. This physical data can differ depending on whether TDI material is polymeric or non-polymeric. Additional information can be obtained from the safety data sheet, SDS, or the technical data sheet accompanying the product. Physical data testing has shown that liquid TDI may solidify at certain temperatures depending upon its mixture. Specific information on your particular product can be obtained from the product's SDS. TDI has a flash point above 260 degrees Fahrenheit. Thus, it is not ignited readily. However, it will burn if exposed to an ignition source at or above the flash point temperature, and fires are possible if proper care is not taken. Viscosities of the various compounds of TDI are product specific. Please consult the SDS or the technical data sheet for the product being handled. Testing has shown that TDI is reactive with certain types of materials, including water. When TDI reacts with other materials, heat and carbon dioxide are generated. Over time, this can create excessive pressure in closed containers. To reduce risk of unplanned reactions, it's extremely important that TDI not come in contact with moisture or water. Other reactive agents include, but are not limited to, ammonia, polyols, alcohols, amines, caustic soda, and caustic potash. TDI is typically a clear, water-white to pale yellow liquid. However, some polymeric and TDI pre-polymeric mixtures can be colorless or water-white to dark brown. It has a sharp, pungent odor that can be very irritating to the respiratory system. The odor threshold for TDI is above the established exposure limits. Therefore, odor should never be used to indicate the presence of TDI. Take a look at some of the potential health effects associated with TDI overexposure. For a chemical to cause health effects, it must make contact with or enter the body. The three primary routes of entry through which this can occur are inhalation or breathing, skin or eye contact, and ingestion or swallowing. Be aware of these routes of entry when handling TDI. If overexposure by any route occurs, Seek immediate medical attention. The most significant health hazard of TDI is the potential for adverse effects on the respiratory system. At room temperature, TDI can form vapor concentrations above the permissible exposure limit. Exposure to TDI vapor may cause irritation of the eyes, nose, throat, and lungs. Difficulty breathing, tightness in the chest, and coughing are also symptoms of overexposure. In most cases, these symptoms will disappear within a few hours after the exposure takes place. Overexposure to TDI vapor may cause respiratory allergy or sensitization. Skin contact may also be associated with respiratory allergy. If sensitized or allergic to TDI, a person may react to extremely low airborne concentrations of TDI. Move anyone who shows signs of irritation or asthma-like symptoms to fresh air and seek immediate medical attention. The onset of these symptoms may occur immediately or be delayed. Therefore, medical personnel may be required to observe overexposed individuals for several hours after exposure. Liquid TDI can be irritating to the skin or eyes. Skin contact may result in redness and may also cause skin sensitization, an allergic reaction. 
Symptoms such as redness, itching, and rash may occur when a sensitized person contacts TDI. If a person has become sensitized, the most prudent course of action is that the individual no longer works with TDI. For skin exposure, first wipe off the liquid, then wash with a polyglycol-based skin cleanser or corn oil. Soap and water may also be used, but may be less effective. Always refer to the product's SDS. Remove any contaminated clothing. For exposures requiring the use of emergency showers, remove contaminated clothing and other sources of vapor before removing respiratory protection. Eye contact may result in redness and tissue injury may occur. OSHA requires an eye wash station and safety shower be located in the immediate area when TDI is being handled. For eye exposure, flush the eyes thoroughly with running water. Many companies flush exposed eyes for at least 15 minutes and then seek medical attention. Although unlikely, accidental ingestion or swallowing of any chemical could occur. TDI has a low potential of toxicity by ingestion. For ingestion of TDI, do not induce vomiting. Seek medical attention immediately. Eliminating exposure at the source will prevent these potential health effects. As with other chemical shipments, hazard communication information is typically attached to containers either by a warning label or tag. If additional handling information for TDI is required, please refer to the manufacturer's safety data sheet. Everyone involved in the handling of TDI must be equipped with the appropriate personal protective equipment. This includes appropriate impervious clothing such as chemical protective suits, chemical resistant gloves and boots, as well as an approved full face air supplied respirator. To prevent overexposure to airborne vapors, refer to applicable regulations for permissible exposure limits for TDI. In the U.S., air concentration limits must be below the Occupational Safety and Health Administration OSHA permissible exposure limits. The American Conference of Governmental Industrial Hygienists, ACGIH, also has established thresholds for TDI, which are commonly referred to. The odor threshold, or point at which you can detect TDI with your sense of smell, is above the permissible exposure limit. Therefore, odor should not be relied upon to indicate the presence of TDI. TDI has poor warning properties. Monitor the workplace periodically for TDI vapor. If you can smell TDI, you are exposed above the permissible exposure limit. Since harmful airborne concentrations may occur unexpectedly, a positive pressure self-contained breathing apparatus or a positive pressure airline respirator should be readily available in areas where TDI is handled. These should be worn to prevent overexposure to airborne vapors should a release occur. Approved respiratory protection must comply with regulations. In this hazard communication section, we have discussed the physical characteristics of toluene diisocyanate, the routes of entry, potential health effects of overexposure, first aid, and personal protective equipment necessary for safe transfer operation. If you have any further questions or are unsure of the actions required of you, ask your supervisor or team leader or contact the product manufacturer. For more information on the topics covered in this section, consult sources including the following literature developed by the Center for the Polyurethanes Industry. Guidance for developing a written respiratory protection program, guidance for the selection of protective clothing for TDI users, guidance for working with TDI things you should know, Occupational Hygiene Air Monitoring for MDI and TDI Guidance.